The Bible calls the church the pillar, the ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. So tonight or this morning, we are going to give God praise. That's what we're doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Um, I said to the workers on the WhatsApp group that uh, make sure you don't enter this service casually. Because I promise you something. There will be miracles. There will be miracles in this service and after this service. In Jesus' precious name. I said in Jesus' precious name. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter number 16. The book of Acts chapter number Praise God. So I'm going to wait for order in the house before I begin to teach. No, you can go ahead and do what you're doing. I'm talking about the people that uh, uh, make sure there's absolute order in the house. Acts 16 and 16. Please turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 16. Please make sure you have maxed the volume for the online church. Always do that. So that because the sound here is not the sound there. Acts 16, 16 through 25. If you found it, please stand for the reading of God's holy word. We're going to be praising God in a bit. And I want your praise to come from your heart. We're going to be praising and giving God thanksgiving in a bit. And I want your praise and your worship to come from the core of your very spirit. This is not just singing to sing. This is not a show. This is the prophetic gathering that the Lord has called upon this morning. And I believe that as we all engage in this mystery of prayer and praise. We just prayed the prayer of thanksgiving for 30 minutes. And the Lord said to me just worship me. Alright let the prayer strictly be the prayer of thanksgiving. And we're going to be moving into prophetic praise. After that, we'll close the service. So I just want us to have some little understanding. 16 through 25. If you found it, please say amen. amen. Two, three, go. Let's read. Now it happened, as we went to prayer, a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination. Stop. I don't like the way you're reading. I want us to read together and in concert with concentration. Two, three, go. Now it happened... As we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us. Who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Next verse. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Next verse. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit i command you in the name of jesus christ come out of her and he came out that very hour next verse and when her master saw that hope of profit was gone they seized paul and silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities next verse and they brought them to the magistrates and said these men being jews exceedingly trouble our city next verse as they teach customs which are not lawful unto us, being Romans to receive or observe. Next verse. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate tore up their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Next verse. When they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Next verse. Having reached, having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stalks. Last verse. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Next verse. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. 
so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose your chains will be loosed the doors keeping you will be open in the precious name of jesus christ father in the few moments that we have in the next 10 15 minutes i ask that you will send light that we will praise you in the midst of light and every darkness will be lifted permanently i declare i'm anointed to teach your people are anointed to hear this atmosphere is conducive for the ministry and the sowing of your word to the praise of the glory of your name it's in jesus precious name we have prayed please help me welcome somebody by your side and welcome them to church as you get your seats please you may be seated in the presence of god undivided attention no distractions because god is about to do something in our midst this is one of the texts that i feel i need time to teach because of the brevity of time that we have how many minutes did you give me i want to stick to time today because this is a prophetic praise service so just let me know the time that you gave me say pastor so they are giving you time to preach praise god they give me time it's just that sometimes i don't follow it hallelujah So take me to 26. Sorry, 16. 15 minutes. 50 minutes. I do not work. We need time to praise God. So I just teach for 20. Watch this. Now it happened as we went to prayer. Who are the we? I need you to respond. Please be connected to this teaching so that you don't just, you know, in Africa, we like to praise God because we like to show dance steps. Before it was Itige right that one has passed now is you people call it leg walk there's nothing wrong with those things even though i have a problem with many of them because of where they originated from they should be copying our dance steps we shouldn't be copying their dance steps now in africa we just praise god because the rhythm is fine the song is good those are accompaniments but the major thing about praise and worship is offering from your heart gratitude to your maker so please, I want you to pay attention. Now it came, now it happened as we went to prayer. So I asked the question, who are the we he's referring to here? Please, I want you to see something. We. Are you sure it was Paul and Silas? Are you sure it was Paul and Silas alone or a band? It was a band. You agree? As now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us notice we and then us please follow me we us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling the girl followed paul and who again and us observe that word the girl followed paul and us and cried out saying these men are servants of the most high god who proclaim to are you here with me who proclaim to us the way of salvation now just leave it at verse um no no let's go to verse 18 that's important verse 18 and this she did for many days but paul greatly annoyed turned the king james the old king james says paul was grieved in his spirit he turned and said to the spirit not to the girl so this 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 translation is correct said to the spirit i command you in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour now i, I oh god I, I don't know why why i'm going here but let me just explain something when you cast out a devil the the, the person does not have to vibrate for the spirit to leave it's a mindset we have in Africa because sometimes during deliverance services, when you tell a spirit to come out, the, the spirit begins to shout and people think it's coming out. Most of the times, the spirit is there just distracting the service. You must understand in Bible deliverance, you don't need gymnastics. I don't know if, oh God, why? <laughs> My God. How many of you saw Keon, Keon Anderson? The, he's been on social media. He's been attacked recently. Last Sunday, you saw him, Pastor Keon Anderson, because he was worshiping and a lady in church began to cry. You know, we, we consider every manifestation like that as a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. But it's not. 
Now, you don't, of course, social media will abuse him because they are the world. They don't understand. The Bible says you don't cast your pearls before swines. He knew as the shepherd of that house that she was operating with a spirit that was distracting the service. Can the Hagen did that very often? People will be shouting, that's not the Holy Ghost. Shut up. That's not the Holy Ghost. So, because sometimes we feel the Holy Ghost is a manifestation. When, no, no, you can do like this, fall and get up and nothing changes. So notice, he said, come out of her. What did you hear? Did you hear the girl rolled on the floor? And he came out. You must know where the spirit has left. Bible deliverance does not need gymnastics. Now, there are times that the spirit can be violent. Don't get me wrong. But it's not always that way. I knew there was more to that Pastor Keon Anderson's um, um, story. Now, for those who don't know the story, a pastor in America was worshipping the presence of God was thick in the assembly. Now, you must understand that he's a hooper. He's a loud preacher. For a loud preacher to say, let's go quiet. He sensed because there are times, the Bible says, and there was an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. There was a fire. The Lord was not in the fire. But notice the Lord had always appeared to Elijah that way before. Was saying there was a still small voice and the Lord was there. There are times in service, a service is loud. There are times in service, the service is calm, but God is doing things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what does that tell us? We have to be, we have to be fluid enough to flow with the Holy Ghost. So let me just explain that since I've got on that. I said I wasn't going to say that, but I, I sense the Holy Spirit prompting me to say that. So he told the girl, hush, 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 hush. Walked up to her. She was in the choir. She was shouting. Now, I knew that no pastor would want to embarrass a member like that. Immediately I saw that I knew that this pastor has been talking to this woman before. I knew that. But he now came out two days ago. Somebody was interviewing him. He said, for four years, they have been battling with that woman. Four years. What you saw is a four-year battle. That's why I tell people, don't criticize pastor if you don't know what they are doing. The pastor won't come to the pulpit and tell you, I've been telling the woman to shut up for four years. She just wanted to seek attention. You know there are people like that? On God's attention, I tell people in the local assembly, the only person that should have the attention is Jesus. I don't accept... Listen, have you seen people who just like attention in where you walk? You see that? They're, they're everywhere and they're also in church. I, as a pastor, don't accept that. You can't come to this church and you want to be in focus of attention. That we, that we pray you out. The center of attention here is who? Jesus Christ. Listen, my face that you see on the banner started about four years ago with plenty beggings. I was doing meeting. I will not put my picture. It was mentors that told me, listen, it is your ministry, not your church. Your people want to know the minister. Let people know who they are dealing with. Look up here. Just a lot of people coming. When they come, just give them that seat to sit down there. Let them go and sit down there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Focus here. Are you hearing me? So, he said for four years, I've been talking to that woman. He has sent prayer bound people to go and meet her. He has sent elders to go and meet her. He has gone to meet her. Every time she will come and want to distract the service. So that day, and guess what? Before the service, they had warned her. They had warned her. As soon as she didn't shout when they were shouting. As soon as the Holy Ghost wanted to move in that silent atmosphere. You know, there's a dimension that says be still and know that I'm God. There's a dimension that says the Lord is in his holy temple. Let the earth be silent before him. There are times like that. You know, I think we've done that two or three times in the past. My father in ministry in those days, my biological father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He just reminded me of something. Please get me that stuff. My biological father. In a service, he will say, everybody keep quiet for the next five minutes. Silence. And then you begin to see manifestations of the spirit. So that's a dimension of the spirit's operation. But as soon as she got to that point, she started shouting and shouting just to distract the service. Now the pastor did the job of a pastor. People are rebuking the pastor that they embarrassed her. The pastor wasn't speaking to her. He was speaking to the spirit in her. Church is not a club. If you don't understand Zion, keep quiet. He was speaking to the spirit. You notice that Paul spoke to the spirit in this girl. The girl is not the problem. It's the spirit behind the girl. I've not started teaching. Can I have my flyer, please? Media team, can I have my flyer? I forgot something that something I'm supposed to do, but the moment I mentioned Father, the Holy Ghost reminded me. Today is the spiritual Father's birthday. And I thought to do this being on a Sunday morning, and um, I want to say a few things about my pastor and my spiritual father. It was 
it's getting to over 20 years that the Lord connected me to his ministry and I've been following from afar. OGTV radio ministry, following from afar, drinking from this grace. Listen to me carefully because I'm here to honor the loins from which I came in ministry. And I knew it was time because I don't believe a pastor should not have a pastor. I believe a pastor without a spiritual father is dangerous because he has other people under his leadership but who can correct him when he's wrong so because I want to end well I had some mentors but I was still looking for my father and the Lord led me I took my bags told my wife took my bags I think it was was the only Ruel we had only Ruel that was our son then so imagine I had one child when I connected with him physically but now I have four. Praise God. My quiver is full, baby. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. Why are you clapping? <laughs> Don't clap. Oh, that's finished. Okay. So, <laughs> so I, I, I took a bus. I remember I went to Ojota or Bega Bega and I entered one of those buses. My first shock was um, I didn't have a car. Oh, I had a car. I didn't have a car. Okay. So I entered the bus. I, you know, I'm kind of I'm not too tall, but I'm long a bit, if you understand what I'm saying. So I squeezed. I didn't know that that's how they squeeze human beings in those buses. You know those buses that go to a sugar and all of that? My God. Hi! And it was for four hours. No, four hours by private vehicle, not those public vehicles. So it was kind of discomforting. But I knew where I was going. So I got there, and um, he had already fixed an appointment with, him, me, with me. And I sat down. You know the story. Somebody almost made me not to see him. Finally saw him. And he looked into my eyes. He heard me talk. The first question Baba asked me was, what do you want from me? And I explained. He said, who do you think I am? I will never forget my, res my response. I said, you are the voice of truth in the body of Christ. I will never forget my response. Then he looked at me. He said, I don't accept people until they come with their wives. Because until you know a man's wife, you don't know his loyalty. He said, but I will receive you into sonship. Next time you are coming, you come with your wife. Kneel down. Lay hands on me. And he said, I bring you into the fellowship of this anointing. And from that day, two elders in the body of Christ looked at me and said, the same teaching anointing that is upon your father is upon you. You see, there's nothing that excites me than telling me, one, that I'm pleasing God, number two, that I carry my father's DNA. Then my wife said to me, she said, the spirit of wisdom that is upon daddy has been imparted into you. And I know what I'm saying. The wisdom operating here is not normal. The wisdom operating here is by impartation. So I want to wish my father in the faith. This is just a few things I want to say. A very happy birthday. And today is 41 years in ministry. 41 years. He said, please stand and help me honor my father in the faith. 41 years in the calling. Listen. 41 years without stain, without scandal, without shame. Carrying the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. Rather, we want to wish you a very happy birthday from the Ward City. We are glad to be of the stock of the Areoguas anointing. Thank you for fathering us. And we appreciate you in Jesus' name. This is the man that you can report me to. This is the voice of correction. This is the voice of encouragement in my life. When I hear his voice, my wife knows. I turn 360 degrees. If you want to report me to anybody, even though you will never have anything to report me for, this is the man to go. I am proud to say I'm a spiritual son and I'm speaking it in the face of the body of Christ. This is my spiritual father and I wish him a happy birthday. Please celebrate God's servant, an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you. Back to the text. Why did you do that? Once you stay in this church, you will understand why I did that. We believe in honor. We believe in honor. So let's go to our text. I've taken more than 20 minutes already. Media, my text. Acts 16. I just give two points and then we'll begin to praise God. You may need to help them. Acts 16. Okay. Take your Bibles. You see why it's good to come to church with the Bible? Take your Bible. Acts 
as it came to pass as we went to prayer is kjv a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain the same followed us and cried saying these men are the servants of the most high god which show unto us the way of salvation and this did she many days but paul being grieved somebody say paul being grieved paul being grieved turned and did what are you reading your bible and said to the spirit what did he say i command thee in the name of jesus christ come out of her now please look up i just want to give us two points and then we'll move into praise okay now this girl was a social influencer please follow me this girl had credibility in the society how many of you know what i'm saying this girl would do miracles say things and people will see it happen are you following me so imagine this girl following you and telling people that you are the real deal let me give you an example just imagine that you have a brand you are, you are doing business all right and a major social influencer in nigeria puts your business on ig will you be grieved will you be grieved give me the name of a good influencer please a christian influencer there's no christian influencer that's a serious problem huh Molua. Moro. Moro. Male or female? Female. Okay. Does she have some following? She has some following. Okay. So imagine that she just takes your business, Mrs. Olamide. And she puts you on IG, puts you on Twitter, and she says good things about you. Ah! Listen, this girl is the best in this field. Patronize her. Will you wake up grieved? You will not wake up grieved. So I want you to understand that this girl had some social influence. People believed that because of the supernatural that worked in her life. And then she was a money-making machine. Did you see that in the Bible? She made her masters much money. So imagine this woman following Paul and say, ah, listen, these are great men of God. Was she correct? So listen, for especially women, the fact that somebody comes and prophesies and calls your mother's name, calls your father's name, tell you what you ate, tell you what you're about to eat, doesn't make the person a man of God. There's what is called a familiar spirit. They are familiar with your bloodline and they have details about you. How did the demons in the swine or in the man before they entered the swine knew that that was Jesus? They said, you have come to torment us before our time. So there are evil spirits that have details about people. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this guy was correct. Were they men of God? Were they genuine? Were, did they come to show the way of salvation? She was correct, but the source was wrong. So the next time you get a prophetic word, don't be bamboozled. Find out, is this from God? That's not where I'm going. I just needed to pull that up. But especially for women, even men. But especially for women. Because women like prophets. They have prophets. Some of our mothers too. Not my own, but you know what I mean by our mothers. They like prophets. One prophet has told me, you must not marry from this tribe. Listen to this. The Bible says, ah, what's this scripture that came to my mind? It said, God in, the, in, the, in time past spake to our fathers by the prophets, but in this time speaking to us by the ministry of his son. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Alright, so I needed to say that. So notice, this guy was a social influencer and she said good things. But the Bible says Paul was grieved. But do you know physically, Paul is supposed to be happy that somebody who is an influencer is promoting the gospel. Is anybody following me? Do you know if it were today, Pastors will give excuse why the girl should be brought on the pulpit because she's glorifying God. You know what we're saying now. Today's ministry will say, ah, no, 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 no. The light shines in darkness and the dark. No, 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 no. God can use her. As long as she's saying, that's why we bring all kinds of people on the pulpit. I want to keep quiet because I feel like mentioning a name of a singer I saw in a church and I, I was grieved for years, for months, I beg your pardon. That boy is supposed to be in the church and there will be ministry salvation to him, but he's singing before people. A pastor will bring a secular artist on stage. Let me mind my business. But notice Paul was grieved and Paul said, come out of her. Now, Paul was grieved when somebody praised, um, when somebody praised him. When they threw Paul and Silas inside prison, he began to sing. You didn't hear what I said. Paul was grieved where he was supposed to be happy. When they put Paul inside prison, Paul began to sing. Come. Let me explain this way. Come. 
Come, you come, come. Don't be, don't worry. Now look at this. Would you be happy if they give you ten million dollars now? He said overjoyed. He, he looked at me and said, ah, yes now, overjoyed. He will be happy if they give him $10 million. What if the person comes and says, I made a mistake, and take the $10 million from you? What would you do? What would you do? Will you be happy? You will not be happy. So imagine what Paul did. What did Paul do? Paul was grieved when something good happened. But the moment Paul was in prison, he became happy. Have you seen the opposite of what I'm saying? Paul should be happy when an influencer is promoting him. And be sad. Thank you. Take your seat. And be sad when he's incarcerated. But that's not what happened. Can you kill the distractions? Kill it. It's distracting. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me repeat that again. Paul was happy when he ought to be sad. And was sad when he had a physical situation to be happy. So what has this got to do with your praise? Number one. If you are here. And you have reasons not to praise God. Then this is your day to praise God. Did you get that? Paul was supposed to be sad. But the moment they took him into prison. He began to praise God. If you are here. Somebody will say pastor. Well, things are happening for people. People are having a good time. People are having a blessed time. But for me Nigeria is hard. For me, Nigeria is tough. Listen to me. If you are that kind of person and you fall into this category, that is the more reason you should praise God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You don't praise God because things are favorable on the outside. That is why it's called the sacrifice of praise. It is not comfortable kind of praising. So, there, there, there may be persons under the sound of my voice. You are sitting here, you are singing, but inside your heart you are not praising God because you feel there are no reasons to praise God. Paul found himself in a season or in a place where he didn't have reasons to praise God, but he praised God. That means when you find yourself in a situation that doesn't demand praise, that situation demands praise. Did you get that? Did you get what I'm saying? Very, very important. Why am I saying this or why is God saying this? Because some of you under the sound of my voice, you have reasons legitimate to be sad in this service. You're trusting God for the house when it hasn't come. You're trusting God for your child. It hasn't come. You're trusting off for the children's school fees. And last week, the proprietor of the school has warned you. But listen, if you came into this service like that, I promise you a miracle if you praise God. You didn't hear what I said. If you came into this service like that, I promise you a miracle if you praise God. Somebody say amen. amen. Point number two. I want you to help me, media. Let's go into some scriptures. Everybody follow me. This is just the last point. Acts 16, 19. Remember I told you something. Paul was referring, Paul was using this word, us. Us. The scriptures were saying us. Followed Paul and us. But there came a point when it became them. So I want to show you something quickly. Acts 16, 19. Quickly. Let's read. But when Hamas saw uh, the hope of a prophet was gone, they seized Paul and dragged them into the marketplace. So stop. Look up here. I want to ask a very sincere question. Look, look up please. Sorry. Let me just click this. I asked you before, how many people went with Paul? Was it just Paul and Silas? How many people? There were many. It was a band. How come they got only Paul and Silas? Was it because they were the leaders? Or do you think, give me the KJV. Do you think others ran away? Just investigate this text with me. Let's go. And when Hamasa saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas. So, let's assume. Do you think they jackpot? Is that the right word? They took off. How many of you agree that maybe they ran away? You know, it's easy to be talking Jesus, but when you see heat. So, can I have four men? Come. And when the master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught, was gone, they caught Paul and Silas. Quickly come, quickly come, smart. And Silas, and drew them into the marketplace, onto the rulers. Next verse. I need two here. Two here. Two here. In fact, don't worry. Let me make it one. So you stay here. Stay here. Please follow me. Acts 16, 22. Go to 22. 22. And the multitudes rose up together against who? Against who? Formerly it was us, which means they were together. 
now there's a separation from us to them. to them i will explain this in a moment next one 23 let's read together two three go everybody and when they had laid many stripes upon why not laid many stripes upon us they started as us but now you are hearing them so let me look at it this way look at come come quickly okay come come so just like paul and the apostolic band these guys were praying together before they were fasting together they used to sow seeds together they will read the bible together they will share tapes together they will share rema together they were growing in the things of god together but all of a sudden the challenges of life came and it looks like only one was separated this is what i mean by separated so that when this guy looks at the people that he started with remember it was us before are you following me so he looks at the people that he started with these ones have job we share he's still trusting god for a job these ones have children he's still looking for a wife these ones are free he's the one paul and Silas, that were in prison are you getting what i'm saying when you find yourself now is there anybody don't raise your hand who can relate with this where it looks like the people you started with have gone ahead of you don't raise your hand it looks like we all served god together we were giving together we're paying tight together we're sacrificing together cleaning church together but when you look at them sometimes when you hear that they are coming to town you hide has anybody been there it looks like they are having a better life than you and it looks like paul and silas were separate from the bunch that they started with the people that they started with are free roaming the streets only paul and silas were incarcerated so notice how it went from us to them are you getting what i'm saying if you find yourself in this situation this is what to do hear me well if you find that the people you started with have gone ahead of you the people you started with are having testimonies and you seem not to be having testimonies this is what to do do what paul and silas did if you don't stop praising and you don't stop praying you will come out of it i didn't say if you start i said if you don't stop praying and you don't stop praising god in your situation you will come out of it see it is easy to start praising god it is easy to start praying it is hard to continue praying and it is tougher to continue praising god when the things you are seeing is not encouraging is anybody getting what i'm saying give them a hand sit down so notice us and them and whether you like it or not there are people in your life if you look at them you're like come 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 Shit. Do they carry two heads? We did the same thing. We even, uh, we even went to the same hospital for Atinata. What is happening? If you find yourself like Paul and Silas, separated from the people you started with in experience, begin to praise God, begin to pray, but beyond that, don't stop praying and don't stop praise it if you can do these two things no matter what you are going through you will come out of it i saw a lady on instagram she did a reel this, those are the kind of reels we should be seeing i'm tired of the kind of things people see on social media and some of them call themselves born again people you know what this girl did she compiled she has been trusting god for her husband so she compiled all she did on the real. So she took sticky papers, the type that Mr. Dejinji buys for me, sticky papers. Oh, so I shouldn't have told them you buy for me, but the, the type she gives to me, praise God. Sticky papers, and she put her name, she put the names of all the other friends that she has that have not gotten married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Her friend gets married, she looks at the rest that has not married, and she put their name, and she stuck it. It was an Instagram reel, and she began to pray for them. She began to confess God's word. They have found their husband. They're in their husband's house. Their children surround their table. Then the next thing she did, she showed us where she was dancing as a chief bridesmaid. And then somebody would tell her, you know, I want you to be my chief bridesmaid. She's trusting God for her husband. Instead of her to get angry, she would buy her cloth by herself and take a financial seed and sow into the girl's life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where well, it looks like the people that you started with are going ahead of you. There's something to do. Maintain your praise maintain your prayer and you will come out of it 
So she began to do that. And I liked the last part of the reel. The last part of the reel was her wedding. Because he that goeth forth bearing precious seed weeping shall doubtless come again rejoicing. But it doesn't just come rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Let me tell you the truth. There's no perfect life anywhere. The people you are admiring have problems. I just want to tell you the truth. This, um, I wish, ah, I wish I was like this guy. Somebody came to me, Idahosa, you have heard it. I said, sir, I want the anointing that is upon you. Idahosa said, that's fine, kneel down. You've heard it before. And that's I laid hands upon him. Father, give him all the court cases I have. Let assassins pursue him as they pursue me everywhere. He got up. This is this document. He got up. He said, ah. In Benin, Papa is Ipa. He, he said, Ipa, he stood up. Ah, this one looked like us. No, he said, you can't have my anointing without having my battles. You cannot. You can't. So the people you are admiring, you do not know the things that keep them up at wake at night. Listen to me. Listen to me. By the grace of God, I'm a pastor. A pastor is beyond a teacher. I fight battles with people. I have seen things that people go through. <laughs> and let me tell you the truth. Everything is not written on the face. Some, some people are better off, but they don't know. That's why the Bible says they comparing themselves with themselves. The moment you begin to compare yourself. That's why some of you can't praise God when you go to church. Your mouth is heavy. So as you see Tolu dance, does she dance? Sometimes. As you see Tolu dance, <laughs> as you see Tolu dance, ah, no, they don't, they don't pay that one. They don't pay them. They don't pay them. Me, they owe me for four, four months. Uluri Buruku boss. Stupid man. Go the old human being for four months. They don't pay. Why should not go dance? Until Tolu tells you what she's dancing with. Did you hear what I said? Not because it is favorable. Somebody was saying, uh, my, my friend just got married in one church. I won't mention the name. But they contacted my pastor. My friend just got married. My friend just got married. You know, some people, when their friends get married, they're sad. Have you noticed that? Watch people very well. Watch. I tell people you will, you will die on time if you don't read body language. You must read people's body language. I do that a lot as a leader. Body language is important. It's not what they say. Check their body language. Share good news with them and see how they react. Because the body never lies. The Bible says darkness was upon the face of the deep. So if you look at the face at some critical moments, you will know what is in the deep. You know, that's what God did with Cain. No, 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 no. After I took the offering, he came to Cain and he said, yeah, Cain, he said, why have your countenance falling? Body language. Why, 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 why are you sad? That was the signal that he was about to kill his brother. So, this girl, her friend got married. She attended the wedding, you know, but some people attend your moment of joy with grief in their heart. It's a very bad thing to do. That's why the Bible says, rejoice with them that rejoice. Don't come to a season of somebody's rejoicing and be mourning in your heart. It doesn't work. So you know what she did? Or what happened? By the time her friend went home, in the night, amen, when couples get married, things happen at night, right? Not in the afternoon. I believe that. For Christian couples, amen. So at night, they were about to consummate their marriage. And the husband could not get an erection. But somebody is somewhere saying, Ah, God, when you go be me. The other one is I say, ah, what have I entered? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, if I didn't tell you now, you wouldn't know that on the other side, somebody is saying, Mugbe. Is the example too much? You don't like the example? Christians like to pretend. So he called my pastor, Daddy. He went to the toilet. Daddy, uh, in Spoke Yoruba, we need to fast. Is good prayer. <laughs> so my, my pastor said, I don't understand. If I recall very well, you just were there today. So why are we going to fasting? So he told my pastor that he wasn't having, having an erection. He said, that's the devil. On the day of your joy, he wants to put you on the fast. Now, my pastor told him to do something. I said, I speak to that thing in Jesus' name. <laughs> Get up! And the thing shut up. Praise God. <laughs> Christians, you people, you people don't like to say the truth. I don't know why. 
the bible calls the church the pillar and the ground of truth what i'm saying is within the marriage covenant is it not right what do you want him to pray to tell the guy to go into how can you be fasting on your honeymoon honeymoon and fast they don't go together you fast after honeymoon so once a lady in church was saying ah and you know how it is with ah uh, that ah uh, is deep <laughs> you need to understand what ah uh, means in the 21st century uh, uh, can be deep. <laughs> uh-huh. So now you get to find final. Uh-huh. Uh, oh God. Meanwhile, the girl is saying, Hey, you should have told me. He said, No, I wasn't like this, so I'm okay. It just happened that night. So if you don't know the other side of what somebody is dealing with, let me tell you something. The Bible says, They that observe lying vanities will forsake their own mercy. God is at work in your life. Do you know God is at work in your life? You see, you see the yes I was low. That's what God sent me to do before we begin to praise God. So that you don't praise God with a heavy heart. Things are working for you. I like that now. I say things are working for you. The Bible says you may not see wind, you may not see rain. The problem is those, if you are like me, I mean, they say I'm a perfectionist. Okay, I like pro- I like progress. I like to okay. This is how far we have come. I like to know how it's going to happen. That's where we get frustrated. So God has taught me in the school of faith. Stop asking. I like Shelly Caesar. You may not know how. You may not know when. But your business is that He will do it again. So God will fix it. Are you hear what I'm saying? I want to say a few things over the assembly. The people trusting God to get married, you get married. You get married to the right person. Is the amen rising? Those trusting God for the fruit of the woman, you will have children. Yeah. Now you go tired. By the time you shout, Tinuka, come here. Yinka, you today you will not kill me. Pray. <laughs> life, life is in phases. So. Hmm? You see a woman that was saying, Give me a child, give me a child. You, when you see her shouting, if you live in the neighborhood where women have kids, I you're laughing. Praise God. Are you there? Glory to God. You today will not kill me. You will not kill me. I did not kill my mother, but you, praise God. I remember when you were telling God, not you, I'm just talking to you. I remember when the woman would be telling God, God, even if it's just one, just one, one child. From one, another one. From another one, another one. Then they now want to kill you. You'll be fine. Relax. You have your children around your table. Oh God, you will have money. Oh, my God. <laughs> you see the problem of the men? Money. See the basic voices. Amen. <laughs> But the truth of the matter is that you will have. Rela- See, follow God. Follow God. My story is too much. If I start, I won't close. Who dashed monkey banana? That's what my biological father would always say. Who dashed monkey? I, when my parents came into my house for my wedding, they ran out in the middle of the night. I've not told anybody that one. My father slept on the floor outside. If you know my father, he would never, he would never do that. He slept on the floor. Ask me why. The heat was not of this age. I live in a place where there was no light. You don't expect light. The only functioning thing was the filling station. But the house was, we didn't know it. it was during my wedding. I discovered that my house was decking. So the heat. So I didn't, my father didn't know I saw him. <laughs> he took a hand and he went outside. And for the first time, I heard my father speak Igbo language. He took the phone and said, Thank you, thank you, man. I lied on. He didn't know I saw it. Thank you. The heat was bad. The man doesn't speak English. He didn't know I saw him. <laughs> Praise God. Well, my, my, you know, mothers will be mothers. She was trying to make me feel good. Are you, you understand what I'm saying? It was that bad. Praise God. But now, you know, God is a humorous God. I say in a place where, don't get angry with me. I say in a place where there's 24 hours power supply. And in case he goes off, I have external power supply. I'm sorry, backup power supply. So you just look at the God. Is a, you see, the area that you suffer the most, the area you suffer the most is the area you will smile the most. I know what I'm saying. Check it. That's why, that's why the Bible says it will give you double for your trouble. So when we start praising God this morning, praise God from the depth of your heart. Forget about what you have in your pocket. Before you leave this place and go on Monday morning, you can get a financial miracle. Did you hear what I said? 
So relax. Things will work out. You hear what I'm saying? So I just prophesied for the men. That was when they shouted amen. Let me go on with my prophecy. Amen. amen. You will live in goodly houses. Amen. You will get your own property. Amen. You know, I have faith for, pro- for people to get property in this church. Faith. The only thing I ask, I tell them, uh, one of my sons here is trying to buy a house. My own concern, because of what's happening in Lagos, said, please make sure that the house is in a good place, not a place that government will come and clear tomorrow. But as for getting a house, this assembly will be filled with homeowners. Yes. You know why it's hard for you to say amen? You have looked at your salary and you have looked at the house. Uh-uh. Go and get my teaching for last week. What was the teaching last week? It's not about money. God can send men to meet your needs. Did you hear what I said? One of my mother's co-workers, Father Mr. Works and Housing, he got a house by mistake. He was just searching, you know, if you walk in Ministry of Works and Houses, you know the houses that have not been claimed. So there was an empty house. This guy just stumbled upon it. Nobody. He searched for it. No living descendant. Nobody. He took over the house. Life. He's living in the house. Nobody came for it. Well, what did you say? Is a thief? No. He went through the system. Nobody. I think they told him to pay one token or something. But there's nobody. Do you know how many bank accounts? That are up in, in with banks that there's no the person men that hide money from their wives. And maybe the man, something happened to him and nobody knows he has money. I'm not some of you want me to prophesy so that you get that kind of house. What I'm saying is that no, I'm not going to prophesy. What I'm saying is that God can bless you without money. He can, he does it. Amen. Yeah. Every man here, relax. You will buy your wife a car, you will you will you will, you will, you will, you will send your kids to good schools. Relax. God is going to do it. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. So we are going to praise God. This is my assignment. Did I take the 15 minutes? Stand to your feet, everybody. So let's begin to worship God. I want you to open your mouth first. Because we are going to be praising God in the next 40 minutes. I hope you came with your instruments. Everybody begin to worship God. You are very lucky. My mood just changed. You are very lucky. Worship God. Worship God. Worship Him. I said worship Him. Are you, are you, are you opening your mouth at all? Begin to praise Him. Praise Him. <laughs> Begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him. Worship Him in the Spirit. Worship Him in truth. Rama mama mama na 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 Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. I declare in the next 40 minutes, your praise will be accepted. I said your praise will be accepted. The mountains before you will shift in the name of Jesus. Over to sound of worship. God bless you. Give them a hand clap of praise. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, We know that our praise and our worship has been accepted. Although we did it corporately, but you have received both our corporate and our individual praise. You know your people have praised you from difficult places. Some people have praised you from difficult situations and circumstances. I declare over every mountain that stepped into this place with your people, that those mountains be made low places. I speak under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God and I declare that the long-standing problems have been turned to testimonies. I declare every sickness is judged in this presence. I declare every negative medical report has been reversed in his presence. I declare all those struggling with poverty, struggling with lack, your word says let the people praise thee then shall the earth yield her increase 
I speak to every member of this assembly and everyone under the sound of my voice. Let the earth, let your field, let your career and your business begin from today to yield to you like it's never yielded before. I repeat that prayer again. Let every field, career, business that is represented here begin to yield to you like it's never done before. From today, I put the mark of favor upon you. I declare that by favor, doors will open unto you. I declare those doors will not be shut. I hear in my spirit everyone who has made a mistake, a terrible mistake, and you are beginning to see the repercussions of that seed that you have sown. Whether it was a conscious mistake or an unconscious mistake, today I come by the blood of Jesus and I declare the mercy of God speaks over your mistakes. I said the mercy of God speaks over your mistakes every negative seed that was sown is hereby aborted by mercy i said they are hereby aborted by mercy in the name of jesus i declare that your head will rise before december 31st 2024 everybody every single person on ground and online will have at least one major testimony I repeat, you will have at least one major testimony. You will sing a new song to the end of this year. You will rejoice to the end of this year. You will be distinguished to the end of this year. You will be lifted to the end of this year. And I prophesy that the desires of your enemies over your life will not come to pass. I declare that the desires and the antics of the wicked one will fall like a pack of cards. I declare that you and your children are preserved. You and your house are preserved. You and your business are preserved. Your life itself is preserved. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise and a shout of hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. It is done. Please stop. It is done. You are living here another person. You didn't waste your time. You know, um, what's, what's her name? Abigail. That's the wife. Was that the wife? Of, uh, Abigail by Makai. The first wife of David. Mocked him when he was praising God. When you look at social media, you see some people almost go naked to dance. So why should I be dignified in the presence of the one who has kept me alive? Somebody here just escaped death. I said somebody here just escaped death and I declare you will live a fulfilled and long life in the name of Jesus this praise has overturned something in your life and that thing it has overturned remains permanently overturned in the name of Jesus the Son of God so shall it be in Jesus precious name one more time let's give God a hand clap of praise hallelujah amen all right so we've come to the end of this service i had an 11 30 mark this is 11 um 25 if i'm not mistaken if you're worshiping with us for the first time please do me the honors as we as you signify and we just fellowship with you and show you love put your hands together if you're worshiping with us for the first time give him a hand give him a hand somebody love on them come on do better than that what city go over to them and celebrate with them amen no that's his second time i've seen you before but at the former venue god bless you put your hands one more time amen thank you all for coming this is the word city church we meet here wednesdays 6 p.m sunday mornings 9 a.m this is not usually our kind of service all right but um, the lord instructed us that we wait we should wait on him i think it was 2020 when god told me that we should worship him for a month how many of you remember that we didn't know there was about to be a lockdown uh, that, that was a prophetic worship and um, god was definitely glorified in the lives of people i saw people who lost their job due to covid get it back bigger and better so whenever god calls for prophetic gatherings like this is because it's about to do something but i wait to hear your testimony 
I said I wait to hear your testimony. Can you put my email on the screen? For especially those who are online, I'd like to hear what the Lord let me know what God has done after this service. My email address is Anthony Onoha at gmail.com. A N T H O N I O N U O H A. Can we get that quickly? Anthony Onoha online and on site if you're here and you want to reach me to testify uh, what the Lord has done, please I'll be more than glad to celebrate with you. Anthony Onoha at gmail.com. So that's the email address. Copy it if you need to because you will testify. I said you will testify in Jesus precious name all right so uh, it's my honor today to receive the offerings on behalf of the head of the church Jesus the Christ if you have any offering for the Lord whatever you feel led by the Lord to give please do that and if you don't have please feel comfortable in the presence of your father so let's give our offerings and our time so whatever it is we came to honor the Lord with in the house of God given that you cause men and nations to give to their bosom press down shaking together and running over in jesus precious name all right some quick announcements firstly can i have the media announcement as i go on online morning devotion we meet on this app it's a an online i believe internet radio app mixlr is the name of the app but our address on this app is at the word city global we pray every morning mondays through fridays wonderful prophetic time that we have with the father god confirms his words god comes with impartations for each day mondays through fridays and then excluding saturdays of course and then the next announcement is our midweek service right here can, can you put up the teaching series for this month you know the teaching series is not praise we are still on this subject on wednesday you do not want to miss what the spirit of god will be saying these are times that the believer has got to be equipped with scriptural principles to financially increase let me say a few things can i say something listen to me this is just the beginning you don't even understand what i'm saying there will be more demands on your money how many of you notice the increase in the taxes that are coming you don't read news do you know there's about to be an increase in your VAT? Do you know most likely, well, let me just leave it, for an increase this year. Let me not say it has increased. I think I walked into the gas station. I went to get something for my family. I wasn't planning to buy fuel. So I just saw the filling station. I said, for, you know, you don't, when you see such things, you push. So I went there and I was already there. My tank was open when I heard that it was almost a thousand naira they were selling for. But I had to so that we could come to church. Listen to this. If you are praying for it to reduce, it won't. The Bible says darkness will cover the earth. Gross darkness, the people. It's not just Nigeria, Canada, America. The earth is burning like an oven. It's a prophecy concerning the earth time. But the Bible says, listen, for you, the glory of God shall be revealed. So listen, the more they afflicted them, the more they grew, which means you can prosper more 
in this economy. Do you believe that? God's word teaches us how to do it. And I want you to join me in this teaching series. On Wednesdays, we're going to go into the second installment of how to financially increase. Now, for those of you who didn't listen to the first teaching, before, before Wednesday, go back on the YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is at the Word City Global. Am I correct? At Word City Global. Go and listen to the first installment. It will help you connect because the teaching of God's word is precept upon precept, line upon line. And on Wednesday, we'll come back here to feast on his table of fat things. Are you blessed? Did you get something today? Stand to your feet. I want you to hold your neighbor by the hand. Don't be scared. Hold somebody. Hold your neighbor by the hand. Hallelujah. Can we have our closing charge? Please, these words are not mere words. They are words filled with life. So I want you to repeat these words after me. Firstly, I want you to look at your neighbor and make this word a prophecy to your neighbor. And then we do it personally. Tell your neighbor you are the light of the world. Please, I want you to say it with life. You are the light of the world. Tell your neighbor, a seed is set upon the hill. You cannot be hidden. Tell your neighbor, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Because he upholds all things, he will uphold you. Tell your neighbor, you are helped of the Lord. And 2024, you have been made stronger by the covenant. Can we personalize it now? Two, three, go. I am the light of the world. I'm a seed is set upon the hill. I cannot be hidden. He upholds all things by the word of his power. And because he upholds all things, he will uphold me. Say, I am helped of the Lord. Prophesy one more time, I am helped of the Lord. 2024, I'm stronger by the covenant. Help me look at somebody and tell them the word works. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. And Jesus is Lord.